Well, hi and welcome everyone. I am Alejandro Ferrero. I am the DSC lead at Politecnico de Milano. And uh, here with me today, we also have uh, the rest of the core team members, uh, Simone Staffa, Gianluca Guaro, and uh, Mario Merlo. You might have interacted with them either uh, through email or on social media or in our first info session. Uh, but in any case, we are super excited uh, to be hosting this event for the very first time. Uh, this is the first time we're going to be uh, presenting the Explore ML uh, series. And in this phase, we're going to be doing the Beginner's Track. And this is a Google-sponsored program to let students get started with uh, machine learning. Um, we're actually really, really impressed by the numbers. Uh, right now, um, we've got over 800 people who, people who uh, register to attend this event. And for looks of we have um, currently over 500 people who are uh, watching the stream live. Uh, hopefully, a lot of people will also uh, check out the recordings of these sessions as soon as um, we post them on our YouTube channel. Um, but enough of me talking. Uh, I would like to hand it off to Jacopo Gargan. As you can tell, he's already uh, sharing his video feed. Um, and he'll be the facilitator and the main presenter for uh, this series of events. And hopefully everyone will find them enjoyable and interesting. So, Jacopo, all yours from here. Thank you. Thank you, Alejandro. So, um, good afternoon, or actually good evening to everyone. I'm Jacopo, and I hope that you can hear me well. Can you hear me and see me well? Waiting to read some. Yes, fantastic. All right. Well, then, uh, first off, Thank you so much, Alejandro and the core uh, team for having me today. It is fantastic to be here. I'll be sharing my screen for the um, duration of this event. So you can probably also see my screen in a, in a second. So today we'll be talking about uh, machine learning. And machine learning is something very, very, very interesting. Oops. Uh, and I'm really Looking forward to all of your questions and to this session. But um, until um, we actually wait for um, everybody to join, I want to try out. You can hear me, right? Yes, because some people are saying in the chat that they cannot hear. So um, I think I'm quite sure that you can hear me. So anyway, all right. So let's test out the chat. So I want to ask everybody if they can please post their name where they come from, uh, where they're based right now, since I'm not expecting everybody to be in Milano, of course. My, my voice is very noisy. Does everybody, okay. Let me ask the team if there are any technical uh, problems. Um, I can hear you well, Jacopo. I, uh, okay. Then, okay, let down. From, from now on, I will just, uh, assume that everything is okay. I just wanted to make sure it's quite important that uh, the okay. audio and we have no technical problems. So thanks for confirming. Well, anyway, so I was saying, so let's test out the chat. Please tell us where you come from. Um, and since I'm not expecting everybody, of course, to be in Milano due to the current situation. And also, what is your degree? So if you're studying computer science or management engineering or any other thing, you're studying at Polytechnic, right? So. In the uh, meantime, I'll be uh, briefly um, telling you about myself. So I'm Jacopo. I graduated from Politecnico just a few months ago, actually. Yeah, a month ago in October. I graduated in computer science engineering with a focus on artificial intelligence and machine learning. So I was a student just like you. Um, now I'm working in AWS, that is Amazon Web Services as a data scientist intern. However, I'm not here on behalf of AWS. What else? I do really love nature. I really love um, doing hikes and just exploring. However, I'm also a comfortable person. So whenever I travel, I really like to, to be comfortable. Um, anyway, uh, what else? Mm. Um, I'm really happy to be here, to be honest. I see, let me uh, call out some names. So Giancarlo Sorrentino from Milano, computer science and engineering. Then we have automation engineering, Giacomo. Uh, Francesco, mathematical engineering from Padova. Then we have Martina Falasca from Rome, mathematical engineering. Actually, I'm also from Rome and I'm here right now. 
this COVID um, situation has really disrupted all of us. And let's see somebody else. I see Pietro Palma, computer engineering uh, from Brazil. Fantastic. Currently in Milan. So we see that we also have a lot of international students uh, today, not only at Politecnico. Let's find uh, Ingegneria Aerospaziale, so aerospace engineering, computer science. Uh, what else? Uh, people from Palermo. All right, so we see that we have a lot of people around. This is really fantastic. Looking forward to meeting you in the chat, in the Telegram group, and wherever else. Well, anyway, I guess that uh, we can start. So we're jumping into machine learning as beginners. So we are not expecting any particular background besides perhaps some basic um, algebra and some really easy uh, concepts that all of you probably do have since you're students at Polytechnic. All right, so let's jump into the session with a video. Our ability to learn and get better at tasks through experience is part of being human. When we're born, we know almost nothing and can do almost nothing for ourselves. But so many people learn a little bit more painful every day. We're, we're stopping this a second since it seems like we have many um, technical issues. I'll just uh, share the link, I guess. So let me share the link so you can see this. You can watch this on uh, your computer. So I'll, I'll paste the link in the, in the chat and in the Telegram group. All right. So you can take two minutes and watch the video. I'll restart it for those who can. Actually, I want to restart it so I won't.
bit, it seems like most of you are done, so let's allow this 30 seconds for all of, all of you to finish watching the video. All right, so once we're getting back, sorry a lot for all of this, these inconvenience. Uh, we tried several times with the core team and everything was working well, so uh, we uh, don't really know why this is not working. Anyway, uh, it seems like the, the link worked, so fantastic. We'll be sharing the link anyway, and uh, th this will allow us to move forward. So this video kind of defines in a certain sense, what is machine learning? And let me ask you, and please just throw answers in the chat, um, if you already knew something about machine learning, if this video was kind of different between what, uh, between what you need or between what you knew, or like, I don't know, uh, if you have any questions that come up to your mind, especially those, especially those of you who never heard of machine learning. Right, so if you, if you have any first questions, like I have understood the English in the video, but I have not understood any technical um, concepts that were um, discussed in the video. So some of you already knew something, some other of you just heard the, the word machine learning, but never really uh, explored it. Some of you is also asking what's the difference between AI and machine learning. That's a very good question and we'll uh, dive uh, deep into that. All right. A little bit too general, of course, of course. All right. All right, so of course we can't really explain what machine learning is with just one video of two minutes. And so that's why we're here today. But in order to understand machine learning a bit more, we will be diving into this fantastic game that I also suggest you to play, and I'll play it um, online now, to understand a little bit more how machine learning works. So let's click on the link, g.co slash quick draw. It's a very easy link. And this will bring us to this fantastic application developed by Google which asks us to draw, to draw a fire truck. So let me try to draw a fire truck. And in the meantime, oh yes, it, it guessed right is a fire truck. Okay, fantastic. Now it's asking me to draw grass. So let's try to draw some I grass. Oh, I know. Fantastic. Then let's try to draw a couch. Not really an artistic person, but it seems I like see performing quite fine, I guess. I let's no try, all right, uh, let's try maybe to draw a person. Fantastic, got this one right too. Let's draw a flower now. All right, this should be quite easy. Fantastic. Now we're gonna draw a blueberry. Okay, a blueberry, all right. This, isn't it this a blueberry? I don't know how to draw this. We can write blue. Okay. Fantastic. And now we're trying to draw zebra. This is quite harder. Uh, okay. So, this is not really a zebra. Right. This wasn't easy. Tiger, ah, I was almost there. Well, anyway, so this um, is actually a really nice application of machine learning. And I really do hope that you're going ahead and trying to play with this game. So please share also in the chat how many you got right and how many you got wrong. So in, I did five out of six. So I'm wondering how many you did. Oh, somebody is asking how hard is this to make, and we will also answer this question. So I see uh, fan fantastic scores. 
which is six out of six, five out of six. I don't know how somebody got six out of seven. Uh, I guess it's six for everyone. Um, and yes, as Alejandro said, please share also the screenshots of your drawings on Telegram. I'm sure we're gonna have like a lot of um, quite interesting and funny um, drawings. So yeah. All right. So let me start asking you, how do you think that all of this comes together? So in your opinion, how does this, this game work? How is it possible that it's recognizing your drawings? And also, how, how could we program this? So from a technical perspective, how do you think that this whole, whole works? All right, so we have um, some first answers. Somebody is asking or saying it's some sort of classification. Someone else, Sebastian, is saying it compares it to training data. Now, perhaps not everybody already knows what training data is, but uh, that's sort of where we're going. Uh, somebody else says patterns, a large data set with similar drawings, convolutional neural network. OK, that's um, already quite advanced. Yeah, and so we have like a bunch of uh, answers, which are all kind of correct. Uh, somebody is saying features, which I really like as an answer. Somebody's already saying supervised learning, which are all uh, concepts that we will dive deep into, not in this session, perhaps in the uh, more complex ones. So if you want to know how this game works, and please go on and share uh, your screenshots on Telegram. I only see one. That was actually the recording of uh, my couch. Well, anyway, um, so um, if anybody is actually wondering how this all works, let's uh, take as an example a carrot. Right? Everybody knows what a carrot is, I guess. And if you don't know, please um, have a look at the examples um, on the right. So. We can say that a carrot has a certain shape, right? Let's say usually carrots are kind of um, cylindrical or triangular, right? And they have some, some of them have some leaves at the, at the top, right? And they kind of have some stripes too, right? However, not all carrots are the same, right? Every carrot is different from each other. One of them is bigger, one of them is smaller, Perhaps some are longer, some are shorter, right? And so there is not really a precise definition of carrot, right? And so it is quite hard to tell a computer uh, these are the exact features that a carrot is defined by, right? So if we visit real quick um, this, this link, it shows you how this fantastic application developed by Google works. So let's take, for instance, a basketball. And so we here have the complete data set. It is a set of data that um, the application is leveraging to learn what a basketball is. Of course, some of the drawings are way better than others, right? Uh, for instance, this looks more to me like a tennis ball, maybe. And some of them are even not really uh, round, right? But what, but what is also true is that when we, as humans, are asked to draw a basketball, then we won't do all the same drawings, right? So we want an application that is capable of learning which are the features that define a basketball and that differentiate it from a tennis ball or a soccer ball or from any other object, right? So go ahead and explore the, um, this uh, fantastic data set. It is full of drawings. And if you're wondering how they got all of these drawings, because they're actually a lot. Now, my guess, and I'm not sure about this, is that they made Google employees uh, draw one of, of, of them, right? Every day they would just draw one of them. And yeah, they got all of these samples. So 
the power here is the capability of having all of this data drawn by humans. All right. So if you still have any questions on this, please feel free to ask them in the chat and we will collect them and perhaps um, then um, answer them at the end of the of the session. So now we can move on. I see, I see there are many, many, many questions. So, all right. Now, um, as we've just said, there are two ways that um, machine learning, actually two ways that, sorry, uh, computer scientists in general um, face a problem. And that is either rule-based, right? Where we simply uh, frame the goal of the product, right? We want our product to do something. We want our system to be able to perform a certain task, right? And then we simply develop uh, algorithms that are made of flow and logic, right? So something that uh, all of you probably know, which explain how the system must behave in a very deterministic way. And then we just refine our system until the goals are met. Machine learning instead substitutes the central part and so it eliminates the exact algorithms to identify um, a certain object, that is to perform a certain task and instead uses examples to train a certain architecture, a certain system that we also refer to as model. And so we can see on the right that the model takes as input a lot of examples of a carrot, right? They're all different. And then it puts them together and it extracts the features, the most important features of the carrot. And then it is able to learn what a carrot is, right? So just like a baby, it learns from observations. And so this is the core idea behind machine learning. So I really do hope that you don't have a lot of questions on this, but now we'll get into a uh, more interesting uh, activity again. So get out your um, cell phones because we're gonna run some polls. So please uh, go on the Telegram group and I'm gonna ask you the following question. So when we are dealing with alphabetizing a list of song titles, right? which kind of approach will we be using? So again, we have the rules-based approach, that is uh, the one in which you define definite algorithms, and the machine learning approach, in which we train a model with the AI. So I see that Mario just posted the poll on um, the Telegram group. And so I'll be waiting for your answers. I, let me see if I can see the results. Okay, so as of now, it seems like 85% of you answered right. So rules-based approach. And so why it is such, well, it is such because there are definite rules to alphabetize a list of song titles, right? So there are many sorting algorithms. You can use which one you prefer, perhaps the uh, one with the lowest complexity. And um, there are also a fixed number of letters in the alphabet, right? We're not dealing with infinite number of letters or with something that might change that we do not know completely. So this is a defined, well-defined problem. So let's move on. Ranking web search results. Which approach do you think is the best? And it could also be either. It doesn't really have to be one or the other. So you could also alphabetize um, um, so, uh, song uh, titles uh, through machine learning. However, in that case, you have a really 
really, really well-defined problem. So it is way easier and also uh, sound as in um, correct uh, to actually employ a rules-based approach. So again, the ranking web search results, I see that 67% of you answered machine learning and 33% answered rules-based. So let me go ahead and uncover the answer. Actually, we can use both approaches when it, it comes to ranking web search results. So why a lot of you are probably wondering, oh, uh, this is not correct. I would definitely use a rules-based approach. And some other of you is probably wondering, um, no, I sh shall definitely be using machine learning. So if some of you is rooting for one or the other in particular, please write in the chat why. And I'll be reading some uh, reasons um, that, that you think uh, one is better than the other. Okay, so for instance, uh, Ricardo Frangipane, he says, um, you, rate, you can use the rating of the stars, right? Right, and that is uh, rules-based, right? Since you want to um, give more importance to those uh, search results which have more stars, right? And that is deterministic, of course, and rules-based. Uh, it's just about sorting. Uh, let's see some other uh, answers. Um, Ricardo Ali says a really interesting thing. He says it can be uh, better tailored to a specific user. And of course, this refers to machine learning, right? Why does it refer to machine learning? Because when you're dealing with a specific user, you um, cannot really apply a rules-based approach. And this is because if you want to go beyond simply saying, if the user's age is between 10 and 20 years old, then do this. If it is between 20 and 30 years old, then do this other thing and so on and so forth. So if you want to go beyond all of this, then you want to extract the features of the users through a machine learning approach. And this is not easy for sure. However, it has been shown to perform way better than the rules-based approach. And it's also quite easier to implement as the feature extraction is done um, automatically by the model, right? And um, that is very powerful, especially when it comes to neural networks, but we'll see this uh, later. So again, somebody says, because it is a linear algebra, algebra problem, and yes, in the sense that some methodology are um, actually employing linear algebra concepts such as singular value, the composition. However, this is um, also a little bit hard. So I see that you're posting a lot of ideas. And so thank you so much uh, for your participation. This wouldn't be possible uh, without all of you. So let's actually move uh, forward. All right, predicting house prices based on location. Which one do you think, rules-based or machine learning? So I see in the chat, a lot of people are already saying that it refers to machine learning. And somebody is also specifying um, regression. Um, however, uh, let's see the results from the Telegram uh, poll. So again, I see that most of you are rooting for machine learning, and a small percentage of you is saying rules-based. So in this case, the right answer is machine learning. And as some of you pointed out, actually, regression is one of the methods that is used in this case. So whenever it comes to prediction, 
you definitely want to use a machine learning approach. And why do you want to do so? Because predicting something is not easy at all. And so it is very hard to define a precise model that is based off of rules. So it is very, very, very hard to say uh, the, the prices of this um, kind of house will always be like this. Um, and so how can you also take into consideration external factors, um, the, all of the features? Like you must be a really good domain uh, expert, right? So you must be having uh, sold houses for many, many, many years and know the city very, very well. And so definitely, since now we do have all the computational power to perform all of this, uh, we definitely want to go for a machine learning approach, which is not only regression, it can be also uh, something else. So somebody is also saying, I believe it has to start with a rules-based approach until you collect enough data in order to train your model. And this definitely opens up to a very a big problem in machine learning, that is the quantity of data that we do have. So of course, Tarek, thanks for uh, pointing that out. It really also depends on the amount of data that you have. All right, let's move to the next one. Processing online payments. Is it a rules-based approach or a machine learning-based approach? And please, please, please answer in the poll on Telegram. I know on Telegram you cannot really say both, so uh, that's also the case. Um, anyway. Let's wait a second to, for all of you to think about it. And again, we're processing online payments. So something really important. Um, you really want to have a precise method, I guess, uh, in order to process your payment. All right, let's uh, look at the results for this. All right, so most of you responded correct, correctly, and that is rules-based approach. So why do you want a rules-based approach when dealing with processing online payments? Well, I mean, uh, what if your, um, the, the online payment system was estimating the amount of money that you need to pay? or it was estimating the um, card number that you inputted or any, any other um, idea that comes around um, machine learning. So you, you really want to have a precise approach when it comes to processing online payments. It is a well-defined process, and so you don't want to estimate anything, you don't want to let the computer decide anything, right? Exactly, we don't have space for errors. And machine learning is very, very accurate. However, there is space for errors, which we accept, right? Because as we have seen, the uh, quick draw application isn't perfect, but that's also because us as humans are not perfect. And we want that an online payment system that is truly important, is deterministic and well-defined. All right. And finally, we have classifying an object in a photo. What, what do you think this is? Is it rules-based or machine learning? So with classifying, we mean identifying which object is in a certain picture. Some, somewhat similar to what we did with QuickDraw. And this is a huge hint.
All right, I guess this was quite easy and I see that a lot of you have answered correctly. Uh, this is a machine learning task. Um, and why it is such? Well, we have already explained um, how quick draw works and there are way more powerful applications of quick draw which however do have the same logic behind it so what is really hard in classifying an object in a photo is that the photo can be quite noisy and the background the environment can be different from face to face from from time to time so it is not um, necessarily true that the background will always be the same, that the angle of the photo will always be the same. And so you want to allow for some slack, right? All right, so I hope you really enjoyed um, this part of the presentation. And we'll now simply summarize the two approaches again. So a rules-based approach, we have that rules are well-defined, processes are well-defined, and you cannot leave any space for errors. Of course, the, in this case, the improvements come from algorithms and network. This means that as, as long as you improve your algorithm, then you will have an improvement in the rules-based approach. So just think about all of the sorting algorithms that you have learned of, right? the uh, effect is always the same. You get as an input a non-sorted non array, and you get as an output a sorted array, for instance. However, the process is different, and the only way that you can improve it is by improving the algorithm itself. Machine learning, on the other hand, learns the features, learns the patterns from data, right? So you definitely don't want to sort something based on data unless you do have all of your data that is totally correct and at the same time how many arrays can you think of infinite right so you can't really perform the task of sorting using machine learning and in this case the um, improvements only come from additional data because as some of you said before it is very 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 important to have a lot of data Right, so imagine if quick draw was made uh, with few data. It wouldn't really work that well, right? Because if you extend quick draw to the limit where each one of us, like every single person in the world, drew an example for the model, then the model will simply have to recognize your example again when performing, right? Assuming that you always draw an object more or less in the same way. So I hope that this extension to the, to the limit was quite clear to explain this concept, right? And of course, machine learning also improves uh, um, by uh, improving the network, improving the technique, uh, hyperparameter tuning, but that's like, way way more advanced let's say the easiest and most common way to make a machine learning system perform better is to add data to your system and the data of course must be clean right so you cannot add the basketball images to the carrot that doesn't make sense of course all right so some of you is asking what are the ways to get data and that is one of the most important questions when it comes to data science, machine learning, and also deep learning, of course, which is part of machine learning, right? So you can get data wherever in the sense that it really does depend on your um, domain. So for instance, if you are a data scientist at Google, then perhaps you do have all of the data on the usage of Google Chrome by the users, right? Or if you are an employee at Politecnico, then you do have all the data on the marks that the students uh, get on the various exams. Or let's um, make another example. If you're Facebook, then you do have data on the number of accesses that a certain person does 
every day. And of course, it also depends on what the users want to share, right? There's a big, um, a big um, discussion around privacy too. All right, so some, some of you also is asking what happens if the data is unclear? How does the machine react? Well, of course, the data must be clean. And with clean, we mean data that when fed into the machine learning architecture, it makes sense. Of course, if the data is not clean, the data does not make sense, then you will get an architecture that does not make sense. Yes, there is also a limit for the data, right? So there is the problem of overfitting and underfitting. However, we will dive into that later. All right. And yes, uh, answering the last question, uh, we can definitely influence the features we want the model to give more importance to in the sense that we can prioritize some features with respect to others, but that really does depend on the specific application. So I guess we can move on because we have a lot uh, to talk about and yeah, we'll answer questions um, in, uh, in, in, at the end of the session anyway. All right, so we're now moving to how do you create all of this, right? So as of now, I am hope it is quite clear the difference between a rules-based approach, right? So if you especially come from, well, actually any kind of engineering at Polytechnical, you definitely have understood the rules-based approach, right? If you've taken a computer science class or if you've taken a, I don't know, mathematics class, like you know what an algorithm is, you know what a procedure is, right? However, the machine learning approach is quite trickier and I'm really hoping that uh, you grasped the concept. All right, so we have another video for you to watch and let me check, I'll send you the link because this will make things a lot easier for all of us. Suppose you have a great so idea. I'll be playing it in the background with no volume, so. All right, let me share the link. Here it is. And in the meantime, if you come up with any questions, please feel free to write them down in the chat or on Telegram.
All right, so it seems like most of you have done watching the video. I hope it was quite interesting. And let me ask you to summarize with, I don't know, not summarize, perhaps find one word that you think was quite interesting in the video. So one word that captured your attention when you watched uh, this video. School, feature, set, training, clean data is very important, or clear, yes, I uh, guess. Validation, yes, training. Okay, so I see how some of the most important concepts of machine learning are starting to get into your mind, which is uh, very, very, very important. Right, fantastic. So I see also maintenance, that's really important when it comes to machine learning, especially if your data is evolving through time, right? Uh, test, fix, uh, hyperparameters, super parameters, I'm not really sure that exists. I guess you just call them hyperparameters. Uh, anyway, all right, fantastic. So let's um, now describe the machine learning process. So summarize, right, what the machine learning process is, right? So of course, the machine learning pro process begins as every other problem that any kind of subject uh, really focuses on is um, to focus on a certain user, on some needs that some of us or the world has, right? Perhaps some of you in uh, before was asking if the world is using machine learning to predict or to prevent the spread of SARS-CoV-2 uh, so COVID today, right? And the answer, of course, is yes, right? And I was referencing in particular to two very, very uh, interesting applications. One of them is the bracelet that Empatica uh, just developed. And actually, Empatica is part, um, was founded by members of Alta Scuola Politecnica, which some of you may know. And if you don't know, make sure to check it out. Um, and so the bracelet from Empatica actually tries to um, understand if you have COVID or not, don't ask me how they do it. You can ask them yourself. Um, and then there's also another application developed by MIT, if I don't go wrong, uh, which actually listens to your voice, um, and actually to your voice, to your, uh, when you're coughing, and it predicts if you do have, uh, classifies actually, if you do have COVID or not, by just listening at the kind of cough that you are producing, right? And so if you're wondering how they did that, they definitely did not use a rules-based approach, right? Why it is such? Well, did anybody, has anybody defined yet the rules regarding COVID? I guess not. There are many theories, right? And I'm not an expert in the field as probably also um, you're not. And nobody actually defined the rules and algorithms to identify if somebody has COVID or not with 100% um, accuracy, right? And so you definitely want a system that learns from experience, right? I have this patient, this patient has COVID, let me listen to the kind of cough that they're producing, right? So that is actually how they did this. All right, and so I, I, I hope, I guess uh, you have like a lot of questions uh, regarding COVID and machine learning, but We'll jump into those uh, later. So after you have focused on a certain user, on their needs, right, you want to define a precise objective, right? So you have a certain problem, right? You're, you are thinking about a certain scenario. You are identifying a certain a specific problem. You want to define a specific objective of your system, right? You want this to be very clear, input and output. All right, then you want to collect the data that you need to train your model. And when I say training, I mean letting the model learn from experience, from data, from observations, right? Um, and then you want to train and test your model. And there are several ways uh, to do that. There's a bunch of um, um, theories regarding validation. Um, testing, right? So we won't dive deep into them in during this session. And finally, you want to predict 
and evaluate your model, right? You want to understand if the performances of your model are in line with what you were aiming for, right? Because it, when it comes to machine learning, it always depends on the kind of application that you're developing, right? So if you're developing an application that regards COVID, then it is not uh, fundamental to have a very high accuracy, right? So with this, I'm saying that if you have a patient that is actually negative, however, you identify them as positive, it is not a big deal because they would, of course, be testing and find out that perhaps they're negative, right? Um, and so this is not like a huge problem. However, of course, if you're referring to identifying objects in a certain uh, photo, you, you want to be quite sure that you identified the, uh, the right object, right? So you, you kind of want to have um, a nice uh, accuracy. So anyway, let's move on. And let me just stress that there are also other arrows, as you may see, because this process, as we were saying before, um, depends on maintenance also, right? And maintenance not only means that, I don't know, you prepare your model and six months from now you change your model. It also means that while in the first phase, right, so before delivering your model, you want to go through the whole process and iterate several times until you reach your desired accuracy, right? So you may go back and say, okay, my, my model does not have a really um, a nice uh, performance, so let me understand why it is such. Maybe it is because the data is not clean enough, right? So as one was saying before in the chat, maybe among the carrots, you put like a lot of bananas, then that would be a problem, right? And so you want to go ahead and change that. You want to go ahead and ask all your users, why did you draw a banana if I asked to draw a carrot, right? All right, so let's move on. Since we do have a lot of other videos, well, not just a couple other videos to watch, and then we will we will be closing off the session. So let me send you the link to the video. And before watching the video, actually, let me um, ask you. Let's, let's do this. So please do not um, watch the video yet. Let me ask you a um, a question. So please use the chat, either the one on Bevy or the one on Telegram. Um, what is the first thing that comes to your mind when I say food? So again, what is the first thing that comes to your mind when I say food? So any kind of food that, that comes to your mind. So some of you is answering pizza, pasta, pasta, steak, bread, Ramen, fantastic, apple, all right. And yes, asking this question at 7 p.m. might be quite mean, but only if you live in the north of Italy. Anyway, uh, all right, now go ahead and watch the video and we'll talk about it uh, uh, later.
All right, so I'm guessing that most of you have finished watching the video. All right, fantastic. So in the meantime that um, you want to um, that you finish watching the videos, I'll let Alejandro uh, share uh, just a couple of words. Uh, so go ahead. So we also take a little break from our machine learning. Okay, uh, you guys can see me and hear me now, right? Are you there, Alejandro? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Can I you cannot can hear you. They can hear me and they can see me, but you just. I cannot. I cannot hear you. Not sure if. Oh, sorry. I, I can definitely hear you now. My computer okay. was on mute. Sorry. In any case, uh, so Jacopo can show you guys the T-shirt I'm wearing. Uh, you guys can stay tuned because um, we'll be uh, giving out some prizes. Uh, we'll give more information about that uh, at the end of this event and, uh, of course, in the next event. Uh, those are like the official teachers that we've got either for awards or facilitators that come and like present some content for us. Um, pretty cool right now. Actually, I don't have it because they are in Italy, but one day I will get it. Simone. Uh, the core team member is actually keeping them safe, and we have a few for, uh, let's say, some winners of something, and at some point we'll decide and uh, clear out all the doubts. But uh, yeah, there are a few waiting for a few of you, and there seems to be a lot of you, so hopefully uh, we'll have plenty. All right, quick break. All right, you can keep going now, Jacobo. All the information, by the way. All right, fantastic. Well, then, thanks, Alejandro, for joining and uh, jumping in and um, talking about the T-shirts. They're actually fantastic. I really like them. They're quite um, professional, I would say. Usually, T-shirts may be in, like, this kind of anonymous, but they're, they're quite nice. Uh, so thanks a lot for having provided me with this uh, gift, and I hope that uh, a lot of you will also be getting it. Um, so you've watched the video. The video was about bias, right? And um, we, I asked you the question um, about food before because I wanted you to grasp this concept of bias uh, through, this, uh, through that question, right? So now most of us are Italian or have lived in Italy or <clears throat> have visited uh, Milano at least once, I hope, um, during, uh, for your polyne experience. So if we... Among our data, choose to talk about food, and we ask Italians to fill in the data set with food, then probably most of the data points will be pizza, pasta, bread, fettuccine, I don't know, and I won't be uh, talking more about that since most of you and myself also might be hungry. Um, so, yeah, that's the, that's the main idea uh, around bias. And if you want to also try to abstract from all of the, let's say, technical tasks that one may think of, um, you can also think about legal, right? So in Italian, we would say sistema giudiziario, right? And so if you, if you think about legal, then how would you implement uh, an artificial intelligence, right? So a system based off of machine learning that is able to distinguish between right and wrong. How would you do that, right? Would you feed the model with data coming from the Italian legal system, system or the American legal system? And would you be actually able to have one unique system for the whole world, would you be able to understand what is right and what is wrong? So th 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 that is very interesting, I believe. And it's also an ethical issue, as Federico said in the chat. So you see that machine learning is based off of problems. And problems comes, come with more problems that are not only technical, so not only like identifying an object in a picture, they're also ethical, social, right? So it is definitely quite scary. And if you haven't done so yet, I suggest you 
to watch um, uh, Black Mirror, if you wish, or um, Westworld. That is a very um, interesting series. So go ahead and watch them. Some, somebody else is uh, suggesting The Social Dilemma. I haven't watched that yet, but make sure to share also all of the series based off of machine learning and all of this also ethical issues that come with it. So yeah, bias is very, very, very important, right? So you want to make sure that if you accept to have bias in your model, you're very aware of that, right? All right, let's move on to uh, the next video, which I believe is the last. So I'll be sharing the link again. All right, so Telegram chat and baby chat. Okay, I think uh, Jacobo had some issues with uh, with the video feed. Um, let's see if he can uh, connect back. In the meantime, you guys can keep watching that video. Um, share your questions. Let me get back to him. You know, issues of doing the, all this stuff remotely. Um, one second. There we go. He's back. All right. Jacopo, you are muted. Yes, sorry. Um, didn't mean to do that, but please go ahead and watch the videos. Everyone stay calm uh, instead of me, uh, except for me. I was <laughs> going crazy here. And I told you, it was just, uh, just... Just watch. Yeah, sorry. Just watch the videos. All right. I'm sharing my screen in the meantime. So you do have the links.
All right. So can you hear me well? Fantastic. All right. So thanks for watching also this video. This is actually the last video for today. However, we do have a bunch of other uh, concepts to cover. So please, please, please bear with us for another uh, 20 minutes and then we will jump into Q&A, right? So whoever of you wants to go have dinner or whatever else, they can go ahead and do it uh, later, not now. So of course, privacy and data handling is crucial. It is very, very, very important to comply with the regulations of a certain um, country, right? And you may know that the regulations in Italy are different than the ones in the United States or in any, any other country in the world. Of course, we are facilitated since the ones in the um, uh, European Union are quite the same as, thanks to GDPR. However, uh, you also may know that most of the um, most important uh, companies are based in the United States. However, they deal with data from people from all over the world. And so you definitely want to make sure that the way you're handling data is the best way ever. However, this is not really our job in the sense that there are going to be specific teams that will be working on ensuring that the data that you're working with is um, compliant with the regulations, right? And uh, we do have people studying law who can definitely help uh, for that. But what can we do as computer scientists and machine learning enthusiasts? Well, enthusiasts, well, what we can do is to make sure that the data we're dealing with is clean, from all of the unnecessary information or also private information, right, that we uh, may have. For instance, if you're analyzing a certain user, you might not need their name or their email domain, right? You might only need their age, uh, their preferences, the history of the websites they have um, seen in the past month, right? So always make sure that you clean the data also from the um, from, from, from the uh, private and unnecessary um, features that you may have, right? So besides that, uh, let's actually move forward to answer some questions that some of you already had. All right, so this is probably the most interesting question and most important question that all of you had probably before um, joining the session and that is what is the difference between AI, ML and DL? And so let's start from 1956, right? So that's like 70-ish years ago when John McCarthy coined the term artificial intelligence by saying that a system is intelligent when they perform when they uh, make intelligent decisions. However, how, how do you measure, let's say, intelligence? And um, what, um, what the researchers uh, would uh, agree on is the fact that a system is intelligent when they behave like a human. However, it is also true that there are, let's say, uh, more capable uh, humans than others. So that is also to be taken into consideration. Right. Uh, so there are many theories around what intelligence means. And we can classify a system as artificially intelligent whenever the system shows a behavior that simulates that of humans. However, we need to also take into consideration that the goal of artificial intelligence has shifted from simulating human behavior so just acting like humans which we, we don't really care anymore about um, to augmenting the possibilities and the capabilities of the human mind so just to make an example uh, we have that there was a, um, a system uh, built um, i don't i don't remember by whom in the, in the united states well anyway that could identify cancer from just um, our exes, 
uh, of patients, right? And the system would have an accuracy of 95%. And the same would have a doctor, right? So if you take a doctor and take a system, they would correctly classify 95% of the uh, images. However, when you combine the doctor and the machine, right? So you would let the doctor use the machine then the accuracy overall would jump above 99%. And why it is such? Well, this is because the computer can capture some features that the doctor may leave on scene and vice versa. So if they work together, they will get you a higher um, accuracy. And that is, of course, what we're leaning towards. So if you're wondering, will artificial intelligence ever substitute humans? Well, not soon for sure we're definitely moving into the direction in which our ai is helping humans exactly as alex uh, said in the chat ml will not steal jobs but will improve the result fantastic all right now let's move on to machine learning so what is actually machine learning well machine learning is a subset right of all of these machines where you feed data into a model and you let the model learn from the data and from observations, right? This should be quite um, clear by now. And what is deep learning? So deep learning happens when, when you consider a specific type of machine learning in which you have a really, really complex problem and as such, you have a really complex network or model too right and in order to uh, deal with deep learning you need a lot of data and that is why deep learning um, was um, employed by researchers and companies only in the last years when big data became available and also um, technology from the uh, point of view of computational power become way cheaper and way more available to researchers and um, companies, right? So machine learning is kind of an intersection between algorithms because it starts from statistics, from linear algebra, from theories that are soundly built. It leverages big data because it needs a lot of data to be trained of course, it always depends on the application that you want to build and on the complexity. And it definitely also depends on technology. So the computational power that you have is crucial for the performances of your system. All right, now let's jump into um, the basic methods of uh, machine learning, which will actually close today's session. So the first method that I'm sure that some of you already know is classification. And classification wants to classify, that is to identify um, a certain class for a certain data point, right? So you can see in the picture, for instance, the points are divided between the blue ones and the red ones, right? So another, um, example would be feeding the network with a picture and you want to determine which classes it belongs to so for instance in this case like a lion uh, it belongs to the wildlife it is a mammal right so it is quite um famous the example of cats versus dogs right so you feed the network with an image that is either a cat or a dog and you would like to identify if it's a cat or a dog of course, this will not be 100% accurate. It will depend on the data quality that you have. Let's move on to regression. So regression wants to find a linear relationship between variables. So it wants to find that line that you may see here in the slide, right? This line that is drawn here, that it is a linear relationship between an independent variable and dependent variables that may be even more than one. And so, for instance, this could be used to predict the, um, how long it will take to get from a certain city to another city, as long as you know the time it takes to get from that city to nearby cities. So let's make an example. If you consider uh, Rome, right, and you want to reach um, and you know that it takes, I don't know, 
five hours to reach Milano and it takes two hours to reach Firenze by car, then you might want to predict how long it takes to reach Bologna by car. And since Bologna is in, let's say, more or less the middle, maybe uh, more towards Milano, then you might say it will take four hours to go to Bologna. However, of course, this uh, result won't be 100% accurate. It depends on many other variables such as traffic and the weather, right? So you can embed in your model as many variables as you wish. Of course, some of them will be more important as some of you were saying before, and some others will be less important. Of course, it is quite important to identify the importance of them. All right, let's move on to clustering. So what does the word, word cluster means and um, the word cluster we have also heard it um, in the news a lot of times since it's being used also for COVID nowadays and a cluster is a group right as you may see here in the picture uh, it is a group of things that in the case of machine learning are grouped by similarity now clustering is a little tricky because um, it is not easy to identify the number of groups um, in your uh, among your data points, right? So you could further cluster all of these clusters into smaller clusters, right? And potentially you could uh, get to a granularity that is quite fine, right? And have just clusters of dimension one. However, in this case, of course, we're considering, uh, for instance, the identification of numbers, right? And you may see how all the twos are clustered together, then all the sevens are clustered together, right? So let's move on to sequence prediction. Sequence prediction is to un understand and predict something that depends on time, right? When you have a sequence of actions, right, and you can discretize uh, the time um over which they're taken right so for instance you may use this when you are referring to predicting a word on the keyboard or what the next word will be so this also refers to the field of um nlp that is natural language processing right all right now the last one which is quite also i guess artistic it can be artistic um is style transfer Right, so style transfer pretty much um, considers two networks and tries to merge them, right? So um, on one hand, um, it considers the network that um, refers to the content, right? So we see the turtle. And on the other hand, we can see a network that refers to the style. Now, if you combine these two networks, you will obtain a, an image with the content that is pretty much the same, but with a different style. That is the one taken from the, con the, um, the other network. So the same can happen with voice um, um, synthesis, right? So now let's move on to the um, poll because we don't really have time for a lot of questions. So this is the last uh, part of the um, of the session today so please remain tuned and check out telegram for the polls so the first question is recommending what someone will download based on their previous purchases which kind of machine learning problem can this uh, scenario be assigned to is it classification so the one in which you're identifying a certain class is it clustering, the one in which you are grouping together uh, certain data? Is it regression, in which you're trying to find a linear relationship between uh, dependent variables and independent variables? Is it sequence prediction, in which you're trying to understand a certain sequence over time? Or is it style transfer, in which you're merging together the content and the, and the style? So. Let's actually look at the results on Telegram. Take your time to answer. All right, this is not really an easy one. 
I see most of you, about, well, about actually half of you, answered uh, sequence prediction. And that is actually the correct answer, right? Because you uh, want to predict what is going to be the next action, right? So you want to recommend based on, the, on a certain history, right? So this all refers to a concept of time series, right? Um, and you're basing your prediction on what happened before. So this is definitely sequence prediction. However, this does not exclude that the other methods may be used too, right? We're just presenting which one is the most used uh, method. All right. Next one, labeling email as spam or not spam. What do you think? Yes, and please uh, do not spam the uh, Telegram chat. It's uh, also quite hard for us to manage that, as you've seen. So please help us out. All right. So let's see what you think about this next question. So the word labeling should really be helping you in this case. And I'll also be answering questions um, that you have posted on the chat. I didn't see them before. So in this case, and most of you got it right, it is classification, right? Because you simply want to get the features of a certain email, right? Perhaps extract the most important keywords or the format, right, from the email, and you want to label it as spam or not spam. So you're trying to understand which class the email refers to, right? Is it a cat or is it a dog? Right? Is it spam or is it not spam? And of course, um, a lot of other techniques are also used to help out the uh, core algorithm, but the main idea is based off of classification. So let me answer actually some questions that uh, were related to, to this um, question. So some of you was asking, why wouldn't you be using clustering? And I would actually, ask you um, both the person who asked the question and anybody else if you want to jot down some ideas regarding clustering in this case and then we can go back uh, to it at the end of the session right okay why wouldn't you be using regression well um, regression is um, a technique in which you measure you you have as output a number right you have um a variable in that is um yeah that, that is actually in the, in the set of the real numbers right so uh it's usually used for probability or for money for predicting uh, the time right so something that is measurable and therefore in this case it's quite impossible because the uh, set of possible recommendations unless it is actually a number which could be the case if you're i don't know recommending the price for a certain house right based on the features right so a number of floors or number of rooms right um then usually the set of um of, of the set of data that you will be recommending is a discrete set right so it is very hard to uh, go ahead and use um, um, regression all uh, right all right so some of you is asking what is the main difference between classification and clustering yes mostly is the fact that clustering is unlabeled so let's briefly explain that because it's uh, quite important and also, some, uh, some, some, somebody else is asking, isn't classification just clustering with two sets? And the answer is, of course, yes, right? However, what happens in uh, clustering is that you are defining a specific metric to measure similarity, right? Instead, in, and, and of course, we won't dive deep into that, 
and I will be, of course, um, providing you with references to books or videos or um, anything else that might be interesting regarding all of this. Of course, also another suggestion is to take the uh, machine learning course during your MSc at Polytechnico. Um, and so that, that is the main difference, right? That classification it can also be multi-class classification. However, in classification, you are providing the features yourself, right? If, you, if we exclude deep learning, right? So you are providing on which features the model must base the classification on. Instead, and of course, this also depends on the kind of application that you're dealing with, because you can do classification also with convolutional neural networks. However, um, in that case, you're not providing the features. And so we were talking about basic classification. And as Luca said, clustering, clustering is indeed unlabeled. So um, this means that the data that you're feeding into the model is not labeled from an output perspective. So let's go back to the um, example of cats and dogs. In the case of cats and dogs, what usually happens is that you feed your model with data that is labeled. And that means that if you have a picture of a dog, then you're telling the model, hey, this is a dog. And if you have a picture of a cat, you're telling the model, hey, this is a cat, right? And then you want the model to be, um, be ready to predict an image which does not have a label. Clustering instead does not, um, is not based off of labels, right? You just throw in the data and you ask the model, can you please find groups of data points, right? And what I will be providing you with, and that is for supervised clustering, is a metric to understand how similar the data points are, right? So I hope this is clear. Um, so uh, yes, I can repeat what I said about clustering. You define a specific metric, a measure, right? To define how two data points are similar. You must tell the model if you're um, talking about supervised clustering, the data points are similar if, and in particular, a, a very uh, well-known algorithm for clustering is k-means clustering. And so you might want to have a look at that. Let me write it down, k-means uh, clustering. All right. Right, so we'll, we'll just uh, answer the other questions um, later. So next question, and we only have a few left, so please bear with us for another couple of minutes. Identifying trends among a group of people who have bought a new music release. Right, this is not really useful. They're not really, sorry, not really easy, but um, if you've listened carefully to what I've just explained, it might be a little easier. So again, we want to identify the trends. So which are the trends among this, uh, this group of people? All right, so I see the answers are coming in and this also shows that I've done quite a good uh, explanation then since uh, most of you got it right. It is uh, indeed clustering as you want to get all of your data points and identify groups of trends. And in, for instance, in the most um, common algorithm that is the k-means clustering, you can tell the algorithm how many groups you want to identify, right? So for instance, let's say you have 1,000 uh, people um, in your group and you want to identify the 10 uh, main trends. If you want to have a more specific granularity, then you would go ahead and increase that number. If you want to have a lower granularity, you want to go ahead and decrease that number. Now, you may be wondering how to choose the perfect number. So the per perfect number of trends. And of course, the answer is there is no perfect number, but there are ways to select and identify a good number 
uh, for the clustering procedure when it comes to k-means clustering. So we'll probably deal um, with that in future sessions. All right, let's move on to um, not, not the last one, but almost uh, captioning a video. Well, what is captioning a video? What do you think? Is it classification, clustering, regression, or sequence prediction, style transfer? All right, so this wasn't really easy, I guess. However, most of you got it right because it is style transfer. So a little less than half of you got uh, this um, question right. It is not really easy uh, to um, identify that it refers to style transfer and why it is such. Because we're dealing with a video on one hand and with text on the other. And we want to merge these two capabilities of our networks together, right? So we want to take the knowledge that we have developed on text on other videos to caption a certain video, right? So we learn how to caption videos with one model. And then we have our video and we apply this, um, the style to the video itself, right? So it, it is quite tricky, I know, and we can um, dig on that later. All right, let's move on. Uh, determining workout activity based on phone movement. And yes, uh, it is possible definitely to use sequence prediction to improve the quality of the frames uh, in the sense that you can improve the, the the captioning, um, definitely, definitely. So thanks, uh, somewhere for pointing that out, definitely. All right, so determining workout activity based on phone movement. So we want to know if uh, a user is walking or if they're running, right? So which uh, workout activity they're doing. All right. Ooh, it seems like um, from the from the answers that most of you did not get it right. It is actually not regression. It is classification. And so why would many of you say regression? Please, please let me know in, in the chat while I'll, I discuss a little bit about all of this. So you want to kind of determine if a certain user is walking or if they're running or if, I don't know, they're lifting weights or um, any, if they're swimming, right? So why would you say uh, regression? You could use regression, for instance, if you wanted to determine how fast a user was going. Yes, that could be the case. Uh, if you want to put together, I don't know, like the heartbeat or uh, the accelerometer or another, um, I don't know. Well, I guess in that case, you could also be just using uh, GPS, but you could also be doing that uh, using regression. Um, and um, okay, let me look at the chat. Um, all right, so it seems like the only interesting. Okay, let, let me let me read it out. So, would it be um, something to use a logistic regression? Well, logistic regression is actually classification, even though it is called regression, right? So, do not uh, be confused with that. If I don't go wrong. I always get confused too, but I'm quite sure now that logistic regression is classification. All right, then uh, somebody uh, didn't really understand all the questions, so that's fine. Um, all right, let's, let's move on. All right, predicting the strength of a password. What, what is it? If you want to predict how, str how uh, strong a password is, 
And this one's tricky also. And remember that it does depend on the kind of problem that you want to face, right? So, and also on the user that you want to consider, the use case, right? All right. So let's get the answers for this. And I'm, I'm telling you that this one was tricky because uh, we actually suggest two methods to go ahead and predict the strength of a password. It is either going to be classification in the most cases or regression. And why it is such? Well, regression is quite easy to understand and well, also classification since um, you can measure the strength with a certain number, right? So as you see in a lot of uh, registrations forms where when you register, it tells you like your password is like 80% strong, right? So that's, that's regression. We're considering some variables, for instance, like you have used a number, you've used like a caps uh, letter, you've used, I don't know, like an underscore or other um, nice uh, symbols. Um, and that is definitely regression. Classification may be used to classify if a password is strong, moderately strong, not really strong, or very weak. And that's when you identify some classes. So it really depends on the kind of problem that you're, you want to, to face and on the complexity that you want to consider. All right, um, some of you also answered uh, sequence prediction. Well, that wouldn't really be the case, in my opinion, and I would ask you to um, write down why you believe it may be sequence prediction. So, uh, yeah, let's move on to the next one. Uh, identifying famous landmarks, so things, right, landmarks um, in, a, in a photo. And this is almost the last one. We don't really have many left. So go ahead and answer. We move on and hopefully get to the Q&A and finish before 8. And uh, let me tell you that I really love how all of you is participating actively to the session. There are 493 people connected right now. So I'm, I'm really hoping that this is uh, really helpful for all of you. If you are a beginner to this, or if you are already a little bit experienced, or if you're also quite experienced and you just wanted to uh, see what um, DSC as a club comes up with, I, I'm really glad and I'm sure that the core team is also really glad um, that a lot of people are connected. This is probably, I think, the uh, event with the most a number of people so thank you so much and i wasn't expecting all of this collaboration from your side and I'm, I'm really grateful for that so you're really awesome all right let's move on to the answer so i would say classification is the one um that we can use to identify famous landmarks in a photo and why it is such well we have a lot of classes right so it could be like, uh, I don't know, famous landmarks, right? So we're identified on all the Colosseum or the Duomo di Milano, right? And um, we want to underclassify this um, object, let's call it object, um, for in a certain photo. So this um, should be quite um, easy to understand. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. All right, let's move on. Suggesting spelling corrections. What do you think? This shouldn't be hard as we already talked about this before. And again, it's not necessarily true that there is one right answer. This is just the answer that we suggest. However, it also might be a little tricky. So let's see what you answered. All right, so according to 78% of you, 
you would say sequence prediction. However, this is not really the answer that we suggest. It is indeed clustering. Now, why do we say that it is clustering? All right, well, exactly. Nice job, eight or 5% that uh, we that answered correctly. So why would you say it is clustering? Well, when you have done a spelling error, you have already spelled out your word, right? So let's say you type in, I don't know, like um, avocat, right? Instead of avocado. So avocado instead of avocado, right? So with a, with a T instead of a D. And what you want to do is not to predict the sequence, right? Because that's a different problem that is suggesting um, a word, not spelling corrections, right? So you want to identify all those words which look alike, such as avocado, 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 right? And you want to put them together. And among those, you want to identify the word that makes the most sense in the context that you are considering. Of course, you can definitely exclude those words which do not make sense. So I hope that this is clear and we can move on to the next one. All right, uh, predicting the quality score for an advertisement. So we're talking about a score. This should be quite easy by now. And um, yeah, the quality score, of course, is based off of certain metrics defined by the advertiser or by anybody else. So it is, it is not deterministic and that's also why we're talking about a machine learning problem and um, of course you can also do that on a rules-based uh, problem but I'm not sure you would get the same uh, nice performance. Anyway, so let's see what you all have answered. All right, 57% regression, fantastic, that is actually the right answer. So I don't think we really need a lot of um, explanation for this and we can move to the next one. So again, we are referring to a number. So that's definitely regression. All right, uh, this one already had the answer. All right, well, anyway, estimating arrival time based on time of day and traffic. We've also talked about this before. And so talking about uh, regression, sorry if the answer already popped uh, out, then uh, that wasn't meant to be so anyway. So we want to estimate when you will be getting at a certain uh, location, right? So yeah, let's see, 93% of you answered right, fantastic. Anyway, I hope that you got uh, why it is such. And last question, I don't know why this is just showing the answer, but okay. All right, so the last question was actually the one about uh, spelling errors, okay? And translating between two languages, and we've also seen this uh, example before, it is actually style transfer, right? Yeah, the last two were actually quite easy. So yeah, all right. So anyway, um, this is what we've covered in this session. We've covered what is machine learning. We've, um, we had um, explored a quick draw, which is a very interesting application of machine learning. And we have identified the difference between machine learning and rules uh, based approach. We have understood what is the process behind a machine learning application. And this is very important when it will come to uh, the project that you will be building. And I'll let Alejandro uh, share a little more on that later, uh, just to give you a, a quick, a quick uh, sneak peek around that. Um, We've also um, understood the difference between artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning. And finally, we have looked at the history of machine learning and at the types of machine learning. So classification, clustering, regressions, sequence prediction, and style transfer. But again, these are only the most important and most common types of machine learning and, and use cases that exist. There are thousands of other applications, uh, starting with neural networks, which will be the next topic that we will be talking about next time. So 
again, thank you so much for attending this. And if you have any questions, please write them in the chat or in the Telegram group, and we will collect them and answer just a few of them because time is quite short. So I'll leave it to Alejandro uh, for the final uh, remarks. Okay. Uh, well, Jacopo, thank you so much. Uh, all this content is priceless. And even though we had a few technical issues with the videos and whatnot, uh, I guess that hosting an online event that was supposed to be in person uh, and the fact that we had over 600 people connected at some point, you know, makes things a little bit uh, complicated, but it was amazing. I truly enjoyed it. I'm not a machine learning, uh, you know, expert by any means myself. I actually follow a different path at Polimi. So this stuff was uh, definitely very, very useful. And but uh, one thing that Jacopo, Jacopo mentioned, the project, um, there will be a lot more information about it in the next event. But just to give you an idea, uh, we didn't expect to have so many people uh, participating in these uh, events and the series of events. Uh, and we thought that three winners would be you know, a reasonable number. But given the interest, maybe we'll be increasing that number. And uh, so we encourage all of you guys uh, to actually participate because we're modifying the prices that we may be given out and uh, we'll actually provide a um, kind of like a manual or a guideline on how to, uh, you know, submit your project, your ideas. We'll do so on Thursday, on Wednesday afternoon after the event so that uh, people can catch up on this event if they haven't been able to watch it online right now. I mean live. Um, as soon as this is over, we'll stop the recording and we'll post it on YouTube. And well, um, I guess we've got um, a bunch of questions here. And since it's a little bit late, what we're going to do is we're going to answer all of them on our Telegram group chat. And we'll probably post the answers on the comments of the YouTube video so like nobody uh, is left out. Um, we would like to thank all of you guys, all everyone that participated in this event. This is for sure a record that um, it was actually confirmed by uh, Google DSC, the fact that we had over 800 students registered to attend this event and over 600 just participated today. So congratulations to everyone. Hopefully you found it interesting and uh, actually enjoyable as well. And I would like to thank the core team because we were running like crazy behind the scenes trying to answer everyone who was asking questions and like all those who couldn't end the event at the beginning. But it was amazing to have everyone else. And uh, we'll be looking forward to seeing all of you on Wednesday. And definitely, uh, we're going to stay tuned on the project submissions because we believe there may be some really great ideas. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jacobo, again. It it's been amazing, uh, and we can't wait to hear more about all this machine learning topic on Wednesday. Bye, everyone. All right. See you on Wednesday. Bye-bye.